I am Christopher M. Allport. As a performing, visual, creative artist and a composer of music based upon history, I've had the fortunate experience to delve deeply into American history. This video is my final argument for electing Hillary Clinton to be elected the 45th president and first female president of the United States. After this closing statement, I will retreat to endeavor on my own pursuits in a period of solitude. Today, we find ourselves on the brink of an election that is not about the minor differences between the two candidates, but instead the difference between a candidate who has spent her entire life dedicated to public service and a candidate who has spent his entire life in self-service. In my early 20s, I had the fortunate experience of working directly with the Democratic Party as a junior talent producer for the DNC. Some of my major job duties included working directly with the President, First Lady, and First Daughter Clinton. The year was 2000. There was a hard-fought battle between Al Gore and George W. Bush. While I clearly disagreed with the Bush policies, there was never a complete disregard for civility. During this campaign season, I have been particularly vocal and active. I grew up in a family that had deep political divides between the liberal factions and the conservative factions, yet I learned a lot from both sides. Ultimately for me, the self-determination of liberal thinking has led me to choose the more liberal social policies in my life. I am not against pure conservatism in its intended form, and I am for constitutional alignment. The U.S. Constitution is an incredible document, and I endeavor every day to further understand and uphold its principles. Sadly, many politicians claiming to be constitutional conservatives have paved the path, laid the groundwork, and built the foundations for the ugly, divisive platform of Donald J. Trump, a reality TV host who likes to say, you're fired whose words and actions have shaken, rattled, and undermined the very core of this country's constitutional representative democracy's foundations. This is the mouthpiece that the so-called conservative party of this country has chosen to represent their values. These are not the principles that made America great. America does not need to become great again. It already is great. It is great because of the diversity, inciting violence against the majority rule, and setting the tone of violent uprising with not a plan, not a wish of hope, not a prayer of joy or peace. No, the havoc of this monster aligning in the shadows of Adolf Hitler isn't finished being wrought. Even when he sorely loses, the damage will have lasting effects. Time will only tell if our system is truly greater than one monster that desires to possess it. But the American system of representative democracy is not intended to be owned or controlled by anything other than the will of the majority, not one person. Now, we have a candidate that has said that he will not accept the will of the majority. In my opinion, it is complicit complacency in which we the people have taken this democracy for granted. For in our naivete, we have yet been swindled again, this time by the four decades of festering and repugnant lies told by the Republican Party that we the people have chosen to buy into to allow to continue to fester in this, that which is the most deplorable, that which is racist, sexist, misogynistic, that which above all else is completely, totally, and utterly ignorant of the grave and sobering power that is the office of the President of the United States. Our culture has moved away from creating, nurturing, and going for what is best to glorifying the underbelly of all which is wrong without actually teaching those who have not experienced the best of what we have to offer to search for their own path to greatness. For that indeed is what being an American is. In life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness are the values that allow each of us every day to create our own destiny, from which Mr. Trump would wrongly lead with pointless platitudes and placations that he alone can cure all ills as the Republican Party points their fingers at the educated liberal elite. Educated. They don't want education and everyone else except their own obstructionist behavior. They have played with matches, yes. They have been setting smaller fires for decades, like a sadistic arsonist, one greater than the next, in plain sight, whilst the good people of this country complacently look the other way. 
Yes, the good, wonderful, brilliant, productive people have bought into the snow job of the Republican Party for decades. The Republican Party of Abraham Lincoln was a different party. And in the words of Abraham Lincoln, as I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. This expresses my idea of democracy. Whatever differs from this, to the extent of the difference, is no democracy. They've bought in because their parents were in, and that's what they were brought up with. They're in because they don't believe in abortion. Well, guess what? Being pro-choice doesn't mean that someone is pro-abortion. It means that the women and men, old and young, who vigilantly stand for pro-choice policies are vigilantly ensuring that every American maintains a right to make his and her own healthy choice in their own reproductive health care. The fact of the matter is that there are people whom, through whatever challenges, cannot, might not, or do not have the ability to be massively productive leaders, yet their contributions to our society are also great, and they also need our help. We cannot let them fall through the cracks. Mr. Trump's currency is trade in fear. He peddles fear, a culture of fear. He will say whatever he thinks he needs to in the moment to grab another vote, yet he has no plan, no backbone, nothing to stand for. Only through true education and vivid retelling of our storied history of the U.S. and the world through the arts and sciences and humanities can we bring ourselves up. Mrs. Clinton and a Democratic House and Senate will indeed move this country towards progress. Progress is what this country is founded on. My sincere hope is to convince you to see the difference between the facts and editorials of true journalism and the distorted, unsubstantiated attacks against Mrs. Clinton. All politicians are imperfect, as are all people. But at this point in time, Hillary Clinton's scars, coupled with her experience and dedication to make the system work for everyone, not just the privileged few, are indeed what make her the strongest, most qualified person to hold the precious responsibility that comes along with the office of POTUS. Search for the truth. Share the truth. Share your stories and editorials and perspective. I implore you, please encourage your family, friends, and circle of influence to get out there and vote. Vote for democracy. I am Christopher M. Allport, and I approve this message.